Dr. Joe Dispenza, all about change, making minds matter, and the brand new book, You Are the Placebo. Great to see you, Great sir. Great to see you, man. Uh, some fascinating research found in the pages of this book right here. Let's start things off and, and talk about the placebo effect. What is this theory? Well, if you think about it, how can you give someone a sugar pill, uh, do a saline injection, and perform some fake surgery or procedure? And a certain percentage of those people accept, believe, and surrender that they're getting the real treatment or the real pill or the real chemical without any analysis. And they begin to make their own pharmacy of chemicals that matches the exact treatment or chemical they think they're get getting. So you would think that it's the external substance that does it, but it's the thought that begins the process of healing. So once you understand how the placebo works from a scientific standpoint, and you understand the mechanisms, can you teach people how to do it? I mean, you speak a lot about this idea of creating change and that the thoughts and perceptions have a profound impact on your body and your brain. How does this work and how does this truly impact our health and, and lifestyle? Well, I mean, if you think about it, thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. So we think about 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. Out of the 60 to 70,000 thoughts we think in one day, 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before. So the same thoughts always lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the same experience experiences and the same experiences produce the same emotions and those same emotions drive our very thoughts and so our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurotransmitters, our neurochemistry and even our genetic expression is equal to how we think how we act and how we feel. So if you change any one of those things, the science proves that you begin to change your biology. And you know, the idea of change period for some can be an overwhelming or arduous task when you're looking at creating new things in our life. I think last time you were on the show, you were talking about how the brain works up until the age of 35 and then how you fall into these patterns. Why is the concept of change such a difficult thing? Well, it's really simple. Here's the old self and here's the new self. And to make the change from the old self to the new self, there's a void. The moment you're no longer thinking the same way, the moment you're no longer acting the same way, or the, the moment you begin to make different choices, you're not going to feel like yourself any longer. It's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unfamiliar. So the majority of people, when they step into that river of change and they feel uncertain or unpredictable, they return back to making the same choices that lead to the same behaviors, that create the same experiences, that produce the same emotions, and then they say, this feels right. Well, no, that feels familiar. Once you understand that waltzing across from the old self to the new self is the biological, the neurological, the chemical, and even genetic death of the old self. And then most people would say, well, I don't know how to predict my future. I, can't, I don't know what it's going to be like. Well, the best way to predict your future is to create it, not from the known, but from the unknown. And that's what we teach people how to do. And these experiences and some of the research you've done talk about the impact on genetic makeup. I hear this argument of nature versus nurture. How important is that for these new experiences to really impact the direction we're going? Well, new experiences create new emotions, and we begin to define find reality through our emotions. And so when we have a new experience, the experience produces a chemical feedback from our environment. It's the chemical feedback that begins to signal new genes in new ways because it's a new information from an experience. And there's been tons of research to show that people can literally change their genetic expression. You take a group of stressed out executives that are really out of balance, and you teach them just how to relax, how to do yoga, how to meditate. And they begin to regulate 1,561 new genes in just about six weeks. They begin to upregulate genes for growth and repair and immune response, and they downregulate genes for stress and the stress hormones. So uh, genes are like Christmas tree lights. They're turning on and off all the time. And genes make proteins, and proteins are responsible for both the structure and function of your body. Once you have a new experience and you get new information, you begin to upregulate certain genes for uh, production of new proteins and you downregulate certain genes for imbalance or disease. You know, this is fascinating. And uh, as a final point, uh, a great deal of your book focuses on the art of meditation here, its impact on the brain. Uh, really quickly, can you outline best times of day for meditation and uh, best area and, and just environmental elements to, to, to get the benefits? Sure. I mean, uh, the whole purpose of meditation is to eliminate your environment. 
environment to put your body away and to forget about time and make your inner world more real than your outer world. Now, brain waves change uh, regularly when you wake up in the morning and when you go to bed at even, in the evening. So the best time to meditate is in the morning or in the evening because your brain waves are all already in that state where you're accessing your subconscious programs. So we tell people the window or the door is in the morning or the evening. We also tell them to not meditate in bed because if you get in bed, more than likely you're going to fall asleep. Find a place that represents change change or transformation, make it be filled with uh, uh, symbols that remind you of what your future was going to be like. And, and it should be a place where you, it's very sanctimonious or you put a lot of energy behind and, and, uh, and then just get down to doing it, which is the hardest part of all of it. All right. Well, some great ideas right here. Dr. Joe Dispenza, great having you on the show. As always. Again, there's the book, You Are the Placebo, Making Your Mind Matter.